Uh, anyway. MIBR versus Yeah. Now, you might not have heard of Yeah. I know you've heard of MIBR. MIBR is the most disastrous <laughs> relaunch uh, of uh, a famous uh, CS team ever in the history of esports. Um, they, they looked like it was going to be a good thing. Uh, they got all the best players, supposedly, and then just slowly have had a downward trajectory. Not even bringing in uh, Americans could help them out. It didn't work, uh, even though those Americans then went on to be in tournament-winning teams <laughs> themselves. Uh, nothing can, has been able to stop the incredible decline of MIBR, and they've been cocooned away in the Flashpoint League playing bums week in week out and they and winning and then they still couldn't win that and the way they lost oh god i can't wait for by the numbers coming on saturday i can't wait for by the numbers i can't wait i can't wait to talk about it it's fucking madness F just full full defuses constantly all up in your face what's that man you don't know the pre-fire angle for fucking the defuse in fucking smoke absolute nightmare absolute nightmare to see them throw that fucking 12-3 lead or whatever the fuck it was oh god oh god but also beautiful beautiful because out there brazilian fans the Coralho levels you're just like what what what's that was that another earthquake in california no that was the fucking entire population of brazil molding Coralho. i was fucking loving it i love thorin's tweet I just love antagonizing those fucking assholes. I love it. I'm not, I can't deny it anymore, guys. Secrets out. I like antagonizing the Brazilian fucking CSGO fan base. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry. Uh, sorry, not sorry. Anyway, that's MIBR in a nutshell. So, MIBR uh, are, are the big Brazilian team, the big Brazilian name. Now, yeah, not as big. You, might, you probably haven't even heard it yet. It's a terrible name. Um, most Brazilian orgs have terrible names, if we're being honest about it. I don't know why. Something might get lost in translation, honestly. But yeah, it's just a terrible name. But uh, it turns out, okay, that there are so many <laughs> conflicts of interest between these two teams. And yet, they are playing each other in the road to Rio tomorrow. Like, soon. It's happening. They're just not going to stop it. Let's look at all of these conflicts of interest because they are are many they are beyond many so first of all let's talk about ownership so it turns out that taco who i know you might have forgot this because he's been so bad lately he's a player on the mibr roster you might have heard of him it's usually at the bottom of the scoreboard if you need to find him um he is a co-owner of yeah along with the team coach dead from from mibr right so they co-own the team now in addition to this there is also and i'll show you the document that proves this there is also a financial agreement between mibr and yeah that if any of yeah's players get good <laughs> mibr can buy two of them for an agreed upon amount and that once that amount is agreed the sale will go ahead so they have a financial interest it doesn't end there and this is a controversial one because i saw a twit longer out and i'm gonna be told i have soggy knees but whatever that one of the uh managers and, and operators at the most senior level of yeah is married to dead so we've got a lot going on there really don't we i mean we have a lot going on um so dead and, and listen she um she put a twit longer out going do you know how hard it is to be called dead's wife when i do all this stuff and people just call me the wife and i've worked really hard over at this organization that is uh, that is outrageous by the way in in media when a woman who's like self-made gets called like you know oh it's the wife of this guy and it's like no 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 i mean like she's done shit by on her own i hate that shit but <laughs> oh god but if you really wanted to kind of be out there and you know you know make a name for yourself you could do it in an org that isn't co-owned by your husband i mean 
I am just saying, like, you know, no one's doubting your ability to do it. I don't doubt your ability to do it. But people aren't criticizing this <laughs> because you're married to dead. People are criticizing this because the fucking conflict of interest, one of which just so happens to be the marital tie, means that this game should never go ahead and couldn't go ahead in any conventional fucking sense. It, it, it just couldn't. In fact, I would go so far as to say, though, the, the, the marital tie is probably the least. If, if it was just that, you'd probably go, yeah, it's a conflict of interest, but we'll just ignore it because it's too controversial to talk about and people will get upset and triggered, so we'll just let it, we'll let that one slide. And even Richard Lewis, brave and bold Richard Lewis, will go, yeah, I'm not, I'm not touching that with a 10-foot pole, even though I did just touch it with no poll but that's just late night streaming that's just how it goes so i feel i feel really sorry for her if she's in a position where her achievements and competence and drive is ever being disrespected purely because she's married to a prominent figure in the brazilian scene that's outrageous but unfortunately you can't do the fucking Woo! The old smoke and mirrors were me. This is part of a bigger problem with this organization, and that is that connection. And that connection means this game absolutely shouldn't happen. Now, let's. Uh, let, I can show you the the document because Valve, <laughs> and we'll get. Oh, we're coming to Valve. Oh God, Valve, why are you doing this to me? I was one of your loyal disciples, but now I am. I broke the programming. <laughs> um, they released, as you can see here, 19 declaration of interest documents. Now, what's a declaration of interest document? It's exactly what it says on the tin. You, you declare any other business interests you have that may interfere with your ability to adhere to competitive integrity, um, and uh, you, you're upfront and honest about it. You declare it so Valve know. And this is what Valve asked for. And they did it. And then they still let this game go ahead. Um, <laughs> fuck, what a mess. Uh, so anyway, uh, HLTV, I want to give a shout out, by the way, to Lewis Mira. I've worked with him on a story before, actually. Uh, a lot of people think maybe me and Duncan don't respect HLTV. And while I'll never, ever speak for Duncan or Duncan's mind, uh, in general, my experience are the ground level reporters are great guys. And they occasionally do work that I myself say, good, really good on you. So bringing this up when you're the number one CSGO coverage site and you're having integrated features in Valve's game, bringing this up, incredibly brave. And then to be incredibly thorough and collate all of the 19 documents, bravo. It is, it is beautiful reporting, absolutely. Um, it, it might not be breaking a story, but this is what good, you know, good factual reporting looks like. So I'll always praise it when I see it, because I see it so infrequently in games and esports. Um, and that's my boy Lewis Mira doing that. So anyway, let's have a look at this document and let's get into it. Because the other thing is, everyone does also turn a blind eye to the fact that uh, Lurpis has uh, shares in Ents. And they've been at the same tournaments with each other. And it's like, that probably shouldn't be happening either. But okay. But these, it's what I mean. We just let it slide all the time. We just let this shit slide. So here's um, the declaration of the conflict of interest for Yeah Gaming. And you can see the other party is uh, like Taco, Cold Zero, Dead, and Zeus are the four co-owners of the team i'm guessing they invested in it financially or maybe purchased it with some of the money because they wanted to have something to show for all of the you know good old days back when they were rocking it so um so anyway the the real they, they're totally upfront about it and they declare it here this is these were documents that were just sent in a couple of days ago and were signed uh and it says that the um oh don't do that hang on sorry guys Exploits just move me to the bottom of the page. I always forget it does this for PDFs. Oh, when will I learn? And now I can't scroll back up. Oh, damn you. Hey, right, don't worry. I'll read what it said for you. 
Uh, yeah, Gaming is co-owned by the esports professionals listed above, also known as Taco, Cold Zero, Dead and Zeus, respectively. Even though they're also hired by other organizations, such as MIBR Phase and EG, both Taco and Dead and Zeus are playing in the same division for Road to Rio as Yeah Gaming. The co-owners don't take any decisions on the company's behalf. All decisions are taken by Camilla Pompey and other staff members, Guillermo Donini, Marcellello Bacciara, and Rodolfo Mendez. Yeah, yeah Gaming CSGO roster is... Uh, uh, tell, and it says the roster and then it says other party immortals gaming club immortals gaming club are the parent company of mibr yeah gaming has an agreement with immortals gaming club immortals gaming club has an option to buy out the, uh, uh, at most two of our players in a calendar year at a, a pre-agreed upon price in exchange for a set annual fee payable regardless of actual roster changes so uh, think about all the things this could possibly throw up like mibr is shit right now um, and it's no guarantee they could beat Yeah Gaming, but let's say they weren't. They 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 obviously have to be the Brazilian team that gets through the road to Rio and goes. To, everybody wants that, by the way. Uh, a, a, a major in Brazil without MIBR is going to be a disaster. Everybody wants them to qualify. I want them to qualify, but everybody who has any financial interest in the game or just in the game's growth n knows that MIBR need to be at the fucking Brazilian major for the hype moments. Doesn't even matter if they go out in the groups, which fuck, fuck knows, they probably will. They must be there so you get that fucking moment, the big crowd pop. And you know when sports fans say, Oh, the World Series is fixed, or the NBA playoffs are fixed. Always has to go to seven games, because that's how you make the most money. You know, and I don't believe that for a second. But let me tell you, there is no way anybody was going to call out MIBR's bullshit with this. But So here's the thing. Let's say, yeah, let's say those players all get together, and they go, we can fucking win this, and we want to be in a major. Why can't we be the Brazilian team at the major? Fuck MIBR. We're going to play, we're going to go hard in the paint. And we're gonna we're gonna play them. So MIBR management go and exercise that clause, the two player buyout clause to the best two players, and go listen. We're gonna buy you. We're gonna drop Taco. We're gonna drop Mayern. You guys will be in MIBR after the major. We're gonna agree it with the clubs. We're gonna get it all in place now. We're gonna put you on fat contracts. But we need you to take a dive in that game. If we don't qualify for the major, if we don't beat you, then we're not signing you. So imagine that scenario. Just let that percolate in your head. How something like this can exist in any fucking sport is, is staggering. It is staggering to me. And that's before we get into marital links, which I know is a bit of a squeamish topic, and maybe I've already over overstepped the line. Who knows? Uh, I don't like to speak about people's families in esports. I think some things should be sacred, but... You're both working in esports, and here we are with this ridiculous conflict of interest. And then, also on top of that, one of the co-owners in the team is is a guy that's going to be playing against you in on on the server. So let's also just say that he, remember, has no decision. Decides that as an owner, well, I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change who makes those decisions. And if these greasy little cunts fucking beat me, I'm going to kick them out of the fucking team. I can do it. I'm an owner. Me and Dead will fuck you up. That's 50% right there. And we'll get Zeus on board. And we'll get Cold Zero on board. And we'll make sure you guys don't even have a career in Brazil no more. So there are so many g grounds for issues like with this that it is it is stupefying to me that the minute this fixture came out with a hat or however the fuck they drew it people didn't go well this can't happen but that isn't the problem because at the end of the day right valve have got us covered right valve are the ones that made them f fill in these forms and valve are the ones who said publicly they were gonna they were gonna stop all this entanglement i'll read you the statement I've got it ready, he says, trying to find it. Those Overwatch League viewing numbers. No, nobody, nobody cares about those. Uh, right, here we go. <laughs> right, so... 
um yeah i was just i was just looking to see how they were doing uh and it did it like forty nine thousand average viewership it's fine i mean it's gonna be fine guys don't worry about it shared ownership a few years ago we started talking to tournament operators teams and players about the importance of avoiding conflict of interest in csgo majors we consider a conflict of interest to be any case where a tournament team or player has a financial relationship with any other participating team or its players good that's exactly what it is valve this includes multi-team ownership leagues with shared ownership by multiple teams or essentially any financial reason to prefer that to prefer that one team win over another in open events like the majors teams with these business arrangements may have real or perceived financial interest in the success of teams that they are competing with in order to participate in majors we require that players teams and tournament operators confirm they have no existing conflict of interest or if they do disclose them and this is the key part work to resolve them valve's words remember those words this requirement isn't new, but we felt it was worth reiterating given the conversations we're hearing. If you are interested, the exact terms we require are below. Fuck the exact terms. I mean, it turns out they don't matter anyway. Now, let's look at the fucking statement that they gave to HLTV in that article. And let's see how it contradicts <laughs> their earlier stance. Contacted by HLTV.org, a Valve representative explained that the sole requirement for ESL1 Road to Rio was that participating teams disclose existing conflicts of interest and that those disclosures be made public so that the community can have an opportunity to discuss them. That's it? So the the work to resolve them is gone, guys. Like you, you just don't have to work to. Re you don't even have to resolve them. What you have to do is, he said, moving to Big Head, disclose them. You have to disclose them so the community, the same community that doesn't give a fuck if games are fixed as long as they don't know about it, the same community that don't care if one financial entity owns 10 teams, right? No one cares. That, as long as that community, that very well-informed, mature community gets to discuss it, then it's all good. It's all fine. What you're worried about? It's... It, I... I listen i've got my own theories i've always got my own theories <sighs> my own fucking theories right you might remember in 2018 uh i think it was or it might have been early 2019 i think it was 2018 val put a statement out for the dota pro circuit and they said that for all of the uh, TI associated games, the majors, the minors, the TI itself, you could only have one team you had a financial interest in attend uh, the, the, the final TI. So you had to make your choice, essentially, over the course of the season. Now, that's a mess. Because in Dota, the, like especially in china you got fucking one financial org has three teams under their umbrella organization and that's before you even start looking at where the runoff money goes to and the academy teams and the other players and this and that so they said that was going to be a requirement now i think the practicality of having to kind of enforce any of this stuff over in dota has given them real pause for thought about wanting to go all in on doing it in CSGO because it first of all it's a headache to enforce this stuff you're relying on people telling you the truth well no one fucking does that in esports guys and let me tell you I don't blame people for lying you make more money you go further telling the truth <laughs> it ain't popular it's never been popular it's only fucking people who have like self-hatred disorders that like me that do that but tell the truth i do and 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 tell the truth these orgs won't and uh 
That's just that, right? Valve don't really want them to tell the truth either. They just don't want to know. It's a process you go through, and you, you, and you give Valve a bit of paper, and Valve go, there, we did our job, right? We asked. And if someone like me comes along and goes, they lied, nothing's happening. <laughs> nothing's happening. What are you going to do? Kick them out the major. They might do it as well, like, there's a lesson, because then it's like, imagine if I exposed, like, a popular team and got them kicked out the major for lying to Valve. Well, that's a fan base that's going to be fucking killing me as soon as I dare go out in public again. And, you know, like I had it with the by Power fans, still get it to this day. You killed my favourite team. I didn't really. I, I played b butter part. Surely, do, do you blame the players? You are the worst thing to have in a Counter-Strike. If I didn't know better, I would say you are entirely bald and weigh £350. So, the, the this is absolute fucking nonsense that they made this very bold, determined statement, which was done, you might remember, round about the time leagues were clambering for exclusivity, not that, not orgs and players had financial ties to, the, well, there was no big story about that. This was about saying... That if you if you get in bed with leagues and leagues and and and, and uh, have like partial ownership on the side and stuff, we're gonna fuck you out of our thing because we don't want exclusivity at all, and anybody that's associated with it will be penalised. And that was that. It, it's it's never been about two teams having where one has a reason to lose to the other or one holds dominion over the other team. Because that's also not forget. Just in a very real world, that if you're the year yeah management, what are you thinking? Is it worth beating MIBR? What if they then don't want to buy our players? I mean, sure, there's an argument to say beating MIBR would be the best advertisement to get your players purchased. But why? what if they don't want to do it out of spite? You know, th that level of entanglement creates so many issues. And just the idea that we fix these things by the community talk. Where where does the community reside, Valve? Where does it live? Is it on Twitter? Is the community on Twitter? Is the community Reddit? Is the community Steam forums? Where is is it Twitch? Where's the community? What do you mean by the community? Who is the community? Am I the community? Because I'm telling you, if this game goes ahead, the whole mage is a joke. Literally. Like, uh, you're going to go... Richard, you no, if you're going to allow this type of game to go ahead, the whole tournament's a joke. It's suspect, circumspect, circumcised, all the words. It, 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 it's a farce if it goes ahead. It's an absolute farce. Um, and and, and the, the whole tournament is spoiled by this, regardless of the result, <laughs> frankly. that The fact that people will just to let the games go ahead allow the potential for corruption what that says about our sport is such a repulsive indictment like i you know i i get it's not a big deal to like 90 percent of people but i am telling you no good comes of allowing things like this to slip through the cracks. Not five years from now, not 10 years from now, not 15 years from now. And let's also bring up a point that nobody else uh, has really touched upon yet. Um, I, I liked a tweet uh, by somebody that I believe was uh, associated with Tricked. But let, okay. So do you know that when Valve made that announcement, do you know how many orgs shut down their academy teams off the back of that and what are academy teams well okay we'll be honest about it an academy team is simply a way to keep potential talent under your umbrella so no one else can have it but pay them a pittance and only enter them into competitions your main team would never be seen dead in um, and, and, and you do it under the guise of it's a development opportunity, which honestly, to a certain degree it is, that's undeniable, but there's more male malevolent, dare I say, thought process behind it. Now, there was a ton of teams that closed down. 
their academy sides because we're like, well, we can't have them anymore. What's the point? We can't play in any competitions. If the players move on and they've still got contracts with us, they could get kicked out of the major. It's a headache for everybody. So, so let's just get rid of them. We're, ne we're never going to be able to reap the dividends of an academy system like you have in mainstream uh, American sports, right? So a lot of them got rid of them. Um, so imagine being an org, right, that gets rid of, uh, you know, uh, 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 like young and upcoming players because you can't have the team. And I'm just going to show you one such team <laughs> that did this, uh, and you can tell me how badly these guys got fucked by not having an academy side. You may be familiar with a Danish organization called North. Right? North are, are, are a team that is fucking struggling. Now, let's have a look at the people that were on that fucking, on North Academy. Oh, look. <laughs> We've got Acor. <laughs> We've got Borup. You know, this is like... This, this sucks. This sucks that there's all that Danish talent and they can't do anything with it. And they have to release the fucking team because you're not allowed to have an academy side and farm talent. Yeah, and you know, and, and Mertz, to be fair, did he, he, he went to North for a bit, right? And, you know, Cycrone went to Sprout, you know, but yeah, he's, he's all right. Acor's obviously the standout. Like, just knowing you had Acor in your academy team and let that slip through your fucking fingers. Like, oh, oh God. Oh, fuck, no, no. No. Like, that's insane, right? So, and, and that, that was just one that immediately leapt out to me. I, I guarantee you there are probably at least half a dozen examples of people that closed their academy sides down because they were told you're not going to be able to enter into the minor major cycle anyway. You're not going to be able to enter into the big tournaments anyway. Where anything that's Valve sanctioned is off the fucking table. We're going to be looking at all the entanglement, all the contracts. We're going to be looking at everything. So they thought, fuck it. It's, it's a pain in the balls. Like, And they just got rid of it. I guarantee there's going to be others. I guarantee, and they're going to have let top tier talent that they could have been selling for money or putting in their own teams go as a result of this because it just wasn't because it was they honestly thought it was going to be enforced. Then on top of that, right, forgetting this for a bit, and I'm not expressing sympathy. Nicola Naiho, think about all the things he's had to do. Now, let me tell you. Shell companies don't come cheap. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure he never wanted to sell all of those teams. I'm sure he wanted to own it all and have an empire. I'm sure he wanted to own fucking Heroic and own fucking Godsent and, and everything else and have his own league and have everybody in the league all beholden to him, God Emperor, fucking Nikolai Nihom, right? But he, he saw this coming and he got... He, he, he got rid of himself from refresh. He got refresh removed from all of those teams. All found him new ownerships, many of which are registered in tax havens. And good luck getting the documents and finding out who's really in control. Not even somebody like me could do that. But oh, could he? Could he? Could could I go to Barbados or whatever the fuck and fuck on the British Virgin Isles and find him? Who knows? Who knows? Talk to the right guy in the right a bar. You know, money changes hands. Would I be willing to do it to go after my own nemesis? Who fucking knows? What if I just found out anyway it was all bullshit and he really had just sold and and i've just made him a bigger villain in my mind because i'm mentally ill but anyway neither here nor there i'm expressing sympathy for the devil right now i'm expressing sympathy for the devil right now if there was no need for nicola and i home to do any of this clearly there was no need there was no need. he could he could have had it all valve saying nicola and i home could have had his cake on fucking been not just eating it just fucking on the force feeding himself with it and, have, and then have another cake legit so so i have to i have to express some sympathy because what in my mind what he was doing and i still believe it obviously was grotesquely unethical um he lied about it he did it in a slimy sleazy way um and i honestly thought when valve came out and made that statement and we saw him quickly extricate him, him, himself from all of his other in, interests to go all in on astralis 
I was like, thank God, Valve to the fucking rescue. Once again, Richard's had to fucking plant the flag, but it's Valve that had come along and said, yep, this is, this is our... But they're, they're not standing by it. So he could have got away with it. He, he'll be kicking himself right now going, I should have tested Valve a bit more. Because why not? You've backed down. What you have said is as long as the fucking community gets to have a conversation, it's all good. What, what does that even mean? I, I can't even understand that. I'm having the conversation right now. I am the community, right? And I am saying this is shit. This is really bad. And this game shouldn't go ahead. Okay, solutions. Tough one, this, isn't it? Because what is the solution? What is the solution? How do we fix it now? How could we fix it in 24 hours? Well, <laughs> the only fair solution. <laughs> oh, this is Corralho. Right, the only fair solution is to disqualify both teams. Isn't it? You can't just disqualify, yeah, because they're shitter. You can't just you can't just disqualify MIBR because they're bigger. You can't let them play. You can't let you can't let one choose to forfeit when there's a power disparity. That's the whole problem. So, unfortunately, <laughs> um, your choice is you either redraw the game with 24 hours notice which fucks over the other two teams that have been preparing for the opponents they thought they were going to get. So that's not fair on them. And why should they be penalized? They've done nothing wrong. So no, the only fair way to resolve this issue, unfortunately, is to disqualify both. And you're going to go, Richard, that's insane. It is. It's insane. It's come to this. The only way that you can do it fairly is to remove both teams from the tournament. And um, the, the justification for it has to be that Valve made a clear statement on it months ago. And they said in that statement, work to resolve it. And you didn't. And you chose not to. And you disclose it on the fucking 20th of April. And the game's being played on the 23rd. Well, you gotta go, but surely the game can't go. Like, does anybody like? It's, how can anybody sit there and watch this game and go, "This, this is fine"? This is like Liverpool need three points to win the title, and they're playing Liverpool reserves. <laughs> Could you imagine it? Manchester would be on suicide watch. It would be outrageous. And then, yeah, because we all know the way that's going to fucking go. Now the betting's all fucked. Now the betting's skewed because you all know who's going to win. And it doesn't matter how high you set the odds to deter betters. We know the upset can't happen, right? So it's a guaranteed win. So now you've fucked over all the bookies. It's ridiculous. This esports never fails to disappoint me. Never. It's actually insane. So, the only solution is kick them out, right? I mean, that is the only solution. Uh, it, it, and, and also, here's the other thing. Where are the player de declarations? Were they ever made? D it didn't say. It wasn't clear. Do only teams have to make them? Because there are some other issues. Um, and it, it's not popular to talk about. On the FaZe document, FaZe didn't, the FaZe team owner didn't say Cold Zero has a share of yeah. Now, is FaZe responsible for declaring Cold Zero's ownership? Should they know about it? Should they declare it? If so, if Valve are saying yes, then FaZe have, have violated the rules. They failed to disclose. So what's the penalty? If Valve are saying no, where's Cold Zero's declaration? Where do the player declarations go? Are they going to be made public? They probably should. All of this should be made public, frankly. Um, you know, and then uh, there's there's others. Get right. You know, I love Christopher. Like he's a fucking friend of mine, but he's still got that. He's got this tiny amount of shares. <laughs> They're so tiny. It's it's you know, but it might be worth a lot one day. But it's still unbelievable. Tiny. Like 
there's like something like I don't know, twelve thousand or fifteen thousand shares been generated, and Christopher has like three hundred and seven of those shares, right? Which again, if, if Nip became the most valuable esports org tomorrow, uh, which it can never be because the person who gave it value was like Forrest and Get Right, but it, 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 those that's that's again he. It's a, it's a lose lose, isn't it? Because he either sells early, and I think Forrest might have um, might have sold. Um, so he either sells under duress and loses money because the buyer of shares knows he's under duress and under pressure to sell. That's not fair on him. It's not fair on Christopher for fucking four or five years of fucking loyal service to an organization that treated him like shit and didn't even fucking pay him at some times. Why should he lose again? on the way out that's not fair that's outrageous but if those are the rules and that's what you're insisting happens valve then i guess everyone's got to eat a plate of shit in the name of competitive competitive integrity but you don't have to like it right but then you also can't have him playing against his old team while having an ownership stake in it you can't do that so I, I don't understand like I, I, you know it, it, it's it, it's fucking crazy to me that we're in this mess still six months after this statement was fucking made or whatever you know it's like this should have just all been resolved there and then valve should have sent their fucking esports guys their counter-strike guys in to help and assist There's, the csppa and i'm just going to assume here based on what i'm starting to know about them the CSPPA should have been helping the players get their shares sold for good value and helping them do it in a time frame and communicating with Valve and maybe even helping them with a broker or a financial advisor. Fucking nowhere to be seen. Nowhere to be seen. <laughs> like, this whole thing's a farce. It's, we, we, we can have all of the apparatus in place to say, look at us, we're fucking professional. But no one acts like a fucking professional or thinks like a fucking professional. It's it's sad. It's sad that this is what Counter Strike Esports is in 2020, and that by the time I'm wrapping up this stream and going to bed, we are about to have a fucking atrocity committed on the competitive integrity of this game. And if you say it can't happen, never forget. I buy power. They decided to throw that game because Dazed had the ownership of Netcode Guides, the team they threw against. Uh, Billy the Reaper, $10, thanks. What do you think the backlash would be if one of the teams forfeits due to the competitive integrity issue? Well, if it's MIBR, which it won't be, and nobody wants it to be, and nobody wants them to squall... Uh, you say MIBR have to be in the tournament. They have to get, they have to, get to Rio <laughs> against all odds. They absolutely must get there, or it's bad for everyone, right? It's bad for the sport if they don't get there. Um, it might be worse if they get there this way, <laughs> but but, it, but it's still pretty fucking bad. So nobody wins, right? So so if yeah forfeit, what the team that is owned by the players on the team that benefits forfeit? That that's awful. That's an awful look. The optics of that are fucking terrible. That actually would point to corruption even if it was done in protest of the rules this is what i mean it's like guys we we have we we have we have got to fucking get our shit together so things like this don't happen ahead of time we can't sit here 24 hours before and esl put a statement out going yeah game's going ahead because valve haven't said anything about it so it's just gonna go ahead what are you like don't you care esl like don't you care like you should it's your tournament you're hosting it like fuck i don't know man maybe i'm maybe i'm like too tightly wound with it but because okay, to, to play devil's advocate against my own self which i do all the fucking time you know people always say oh you richard lewis like self-awareness i'm the most self-aware motherfucker on planet earth let me tell you because I, I, I hyper analyze everything that comes out my fucking mouth and then second guess myself and then go back and double and triple it and I, I review my shit all the time it's why i'm never static and the only thing that's ever immutable are my fucking basic core principles um but so, so to play devil's advocate to my argument in in football 
not soccer to my American friends, which won't be watching because we're on EU time now. They do allow team owners to own low-level percentages, uh, uh, like t less than 8%, I think it might be in the Premier League, of other teams, provided it's disclosed. Maybe Valve need to come up with a criteria and say, you can own 2%, you can own 4%, you can own 5%, 6%, whatever it is, you can own that percent and it's fine, as long as it's disclosed. And I'm okay with that. As long as, as long as everybody, and I mean, it's not ideal, but other sports do do it. There's precedent, so I mean, other sports are corrupt as fuck. <laughs> but, but you know, it, we we we're gonna have to accept some baseline level of corruption. I mean, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna give myself an, a, two ulcers and a brain bleed, and I'm gonna look like fucking Joe Biden by the time I'm forty fucking years old. But the the, the reality is that we we need to fucking do more to minimize the levels of corruption that we see in esports and when we just go eh, we'll let the community have a conversation about fuck this this is madness that the community are not fit to fucking drive anything I i'm afraid to say and that might sound hideously arrogant and i know some of you are even gonna go oh, oh my feelings understand there is no wisdom in the crowd understand what the community looks like and like the george carlin quote right 50 percent. imagine how stupid the average person is and then grasp at 50 percent of people are stupider than that you it's the adults in the room have to make a call 